All right, this is the first of a series of lectures on production theory, where we're going to be looking at economics from the viewpoint of a business or an entrepreneur. And we're going to be focusing on analyzing the cost structure of a business to see how we can understand or guide the decisions that need to be made. And it all starts by looking at a production function. And let's look at this very simple production function that I have here, where sometimes we can collect data and analyze that data to come up with these production functions. But we're just going to look at a very simple version here, where Q, the amount of product that we are able to produce, is equal to 2 times the square root of L, the number of laborers, or the number of hours. You can think about it that way times the square root of k, where k is the number of machines that we have. So we're just looking at a very simplest example of a production function. In the real world, these can be very complicated with many different types of inputs. But in this case, we're restricting it to two kinds of inputs. Labor, which is a variable input, and capital, which is a fixed input. Now, why do we call these variable and fixed inputs? The reason is labor is something that you can adjust on the fly on very, very short notice. I can use more workers, fewer workers, or I can use my workers more hours or fewer hours. So L is a variable input because it's very easy to vary in the short run. K, capital, or machines in this case, are things that you can vary but not immediately, not in the short run. And in the short run, I think about the shortest time frame, one day. What are we going to do today? It would be very difficult in many or most businesses to add more capital. And by capital, we're thinking about buildings, machinery, um, heavy equipment, like drill presses, things like that, today. That's something that you could maybe add in a week or a month or a year if it's a, adding a second production line. So L are short run things that we can change in the short run. And K, those are things that are fixed today. We can't change them. But over the long run, give me a few weeks or months, we could change them. So we're going to suppose this is our production function and that the number of machines we have right now is 9. So k equals 9 and we can't change that now. In the long run we could. And let's suppose that we rent these machines for $10 per day or we've borrowed money and we're paying $10 in interest on that money or we've used our own money and we're losing $10 in interest on that money we have tied up in these machines. And each worker, let's suppose, costs $100 per day to keep the numbers simple. Now, since k equals 9, and that's fixed right now, let's just go ahead and plug 9 into this equation and simplify. And what that'll give us is q equals 2 times the square root of the number of laborers times the square root of 9, which is 3. And if we collect those terms, we can just simplify this equation as q equals 2 times 3, 6, times uh, the square root of L, right? And I'll just write this this way to, uh, so I don't get into all the notation in this program. It would be more difficult. So Q equals 6 times the square root of L. What do we do with this? Well, let's plug in some different numbers of laborers that we could possibly use today and see what kind of answers we get out. Now, Let's start by assuming we have no laborers. And I'm not going to plug in all these numbers here. But if we had no laborers, then our output would be 2 times the square root of 0 times the square root of you know, 9, or, or q equals 6 times the square root of 0. We'd have no output if we use no workers. And that might make sense for most businesses. So let's just start by plugging in 1. And let's see what all these things are in this table that we can fill out. So right here, uh, if we used one worker, how much output would we get? Six times the square root of one. Well, that's just six units of output. 
What's our marginal product? Well, anytime you see the word marginal, it means additional. And what we're thinking of here is how much additional how much additional output do I, did I get when I added that additional worker, marginal product. So we're trying to get a feel for how much benefit we're getting out of that worker, six units, because we're going from no output to six with that first worker. How much is our average product? Sometimes we call this productivity. Well, this is how much product we're getting per worker. Per worker means divide by the number of workers. Six units divided by the one worker equals six. All right, not very interesting so far. How much are our fixed costs? Now, fixed costs are how much money we're spending on these fixed inputs, which are the machines, the capital. Nine times ten dollars, ninety bucks in fixed costs. VC, variable costs. Well, we have one worker at $100 per day, and labor and materials are variable costs, so we have $100 in variable costs. Add them together to get our total costs, $190. And then our marginal cost per unit of output. We're looking at how much money did it cost us to get this six units of output? Well, we had to hire one worker to get it. Right? Our other costs we already had to pay, uh, we had to hire that one worker, which costs us $100 extra, and we got six extra units of product. So we're looking at dividing the extra cost for the worker, 100, divided by the six units of extra work of output. 100 divided by six tells us that those units, those first six units, cost us $16.67 each. Let's go to the second line here and let's add a second worker and you'll get a feel for what's going on. If we add a second worker, how much output will we get? Well we need to plug in 2 into our formula here. Quantity equals 6 times the square root of 2 in this case. So the square root of 2 is uh, 1.4142. Multiply that times 6 and we get 8.485 units. Let's just round that to 8.5 units. I don't really recommend rounding off this much in general, but let's make it easy to talk about. 8.5 units now that we have hired two workers. What's the marginal product? How much extra output did we get for that sec when we hired the second worker? Well, we got 2.5 more units. We went from 6 to 8.5. Now, how much is our average product? Eight and a half units of output divided by the two workers. We're getting eight and a half divided by two. We're getting 4.25 units of output per worker. This productivity tells us uh, how, many, how many outputs we're getting per unit of labor input. Now, why might it go down from 6 to 4.25? The usual idea is the more workers you have sharing the same number of machines, the same factory, the same number of tools, the lower that productivity will be. This is why sometimes we see productivity go up during a recession. When you lay off half of your workforce, the people who remain have a lot more resources to work with uh, per worker left and so those remaining workers are usually more productive. Now how much are our fixed costs now? The money we spend for our machines. Well that's always fixed. That's ninety dollars still. How much are our variable costs for our labor and materials? Well all we have is a labor but now we have two of them and so now that's two hundred dollars for our workers. Total costs two hundred ninety dollars. How much are our marginal costs for these last two and a half units we got? Well, it costs us a hundred extra dollars to get those two and a half units. And so a hundred dollars divided by the two and a half extra units we got. These last couple of units are costing us at the rate of forty dollars per unit. Now I'm going to pause this and fill out the next couple of rows. You pause the video and see if you can figure out what the next couple of rows should look like. Okay, here's what the rest of the table down to five workers would give us. And the general pattern you should notice is that the marginal product is going down. We get less additional output per additional worker. 
because they're again more people sharing the same amount of equipment uh, the fixed costs are always fixed the productivity is going down the average product is going down because the marginal product is going down um, the variable costs are always going up as we use more workers the total cost also going up as we use more workers and the marginal cost is going up again each additional worker is giving us less and less additional output another way of say, thinking about that is that each additional unit of output is costing us more and more money now let's make a graph of what's going on here real quick so just by plotting the number of workers on the x-axis and the amount of output on the y-axis we see the typical shape for a production function it goes up pretty steep at first and then gets uh, flatter and flatter and flatter as we go now in the next lecture we're going to look at this same function from a totally different angle